It's Anthony Pitchmona here, founder of AP Growth. And in today's video, we're gonna go over a full account breakdown, show you all the trades I'm in and my thought process behind them all. My goal here is to educate you to help you achieve financial freedom in the stock market with options trading, day trading, swing trading. So if you're interested in that, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button at the end if you appreciate it. And let's dive into it now. Hey guys, Anthony Pitchbone here, founder of AP Growth. In today's video, we're doing a full apartment tour. I'm in Miami specifically for a few months. An update on my account and all the strategies I'm currently using. I did contact the Airbnb host and for a longer term rental, this would be 4,000 US per month, which isn't that bad considering everything that's included in this building. This is where the magic happens. I wake up every day at 7 a.m., go to bed at 10 p.m. I'll journal, write down everything I'm grateful for, what needs to be done today. I'll meditate right there and then I'll read right here. After that, this is where the real magic is done. This is where I trade, scan charts, create content, and have my finance calls. I got coffee and electrolytes there. This is the full view. It's considered a studio apartment, but it's huge. So I've got the bed here, decently comfortable closet with everything. Bathroom over there. Kitchen is nice. Awesome TV set up here. So let's take a look at the kitchen area. Here's where I can sit and do work, but I haven't really used that much. Microwave there, stove top here, plenty of counter space, coffee sink dishwasher is hidden We've got the fridge We've got the pantry here is where the washer and dryer is i've got my bike set up right here ready to go with my helmet my heart rate monitor and everything i need to go and now we're entering the bathroom it's beautiful it's huge we've got a nice big mirror there that's lit with the sink we've got one shower here which i don't like using because there's no curtain then we've got another shower here which is awesome it's got like the rainfall water and then the toilets over here there's a door that could close here but i just keep it open back out to the bedroom there's a spa here there's plenty of pools outside that's all included i actually have a massage and a facial booked for this at the end of this week the gym is great there's basketball courts squash courts tennis courts soccer fields golf simulation club room to play pool there's a room for parties there's a pool on the 56th floor that's private. You can go and do whatever you want. I'm starting to do my swim workouts. Then we've got a pool on the 58th floor, which is more for parties. There's a marketplace that has a little convenience store where you can just go grab food, pay for it there with no one there, and then go on your way. You essentially don't need to leave your building and you have everything you need. If you're new here, you're gonna see this core position of mine in Tesla stock. We have 828 shares in this one account. I don't touch the core position of Tesla shares. I might trade around 100 or 200 shares, but the entirety of the position I keep as a long-term hold. The rest I use for trading. So we're currently actually swing trading forward stock. We have 4,000 shares. Market value is 98,000. Cost basis is 24.51. If you take a look at forward on the daily chart using the Heiken Ashes, you can see this momentum. There was a huge volume spike January 4th that had it break out to new highs. We broke out to new highs and volume has been declining as the RSI has stayed above 70 on the daily and we've had inside bars with declining volume staying at all time highs. This is an extremely bullish stance on a stock, a very high probability for continuation because what happens is we break out to all time highs, volume declines but the stock stays at highs. And when there's inside bars at highs, there's a high probability of us having a continuation on an increase in volume. So if we have more volume come in in the coming days, then it's likely to continue higher. I'm looking to take profit around the 25s in the coming days, and my stop loss is actually at the bottom here. So if we break 24, then I'm gonna be cutting the loss for about a $1,000 loss on the trade. If you take a look at forward on the weekly chart, again, definitely looks poised for continuation. We have the RSI turning to head up and continuing higher. It's not making lower highs. So it's very likely to see another green bar like this continue to 25, 26. Next position here is on Oatly. And this was a swing trade I was looking to hold for a couple days, 2,000 shares, cost basis of 814, currently at 796. We are at about a $400 loss on this position. My thought process here on Oatly is we're down about 70% from highs. And this is a strategy I'm actually testing. When there's stocks that are extremely oversold and they keep going down and down and down and down, but they start to curl, meaning they start to have decreasing volume and they don't have much more selling, then there's an increase in volume and a spike on RSI. There is a higher probability of us actually getting a good push up and that could last a couple days or a couple weeks, pushing us up to about eight or nine dollars. And then I'll be looking to take profits. So this is a strategy I'm testing. And if you take a look at that, what that's exactly what you'll see here. 
We are starting to run out of sellers once we got down to the sevens. So you can see the consolidation. We broke eight and then we kind of traded as high as nine, went lower, traded as low as about 720, came up to about high eights, traded down as low as 720 again, and then traded about mid eights, sold off yesterday and got down to about 782. Now pre-market we're at 799. And again, on the volume, we're seeing a volume increase the past couple of days. We see the RSI, we see the RSI climbing since December 22nd, making higher lows, which is a great sign. I'm looking to take profit when we do get to the nines, and that would be over a 10% gain on the position, which would be about $1,000. It's a small position of mine. Again, it's a test, but my stop loss is actually at 780 flat. And yesterday we hit 782 and I bought yesterday at 815. Next position is on DWAC. Uh, we have 100 shares and the cost basis was 66.65, currently at 70.65. So we're at a profit of about $500 on this position. Super small one. I was just testing it out. If you take a look at DWAC on the daily chart, you'll see why I liked it. So on the daily, yesterday we broke the RSI of 70. So what my test was, once we get above 70, we're going to see that explosive movement and continuation. So I'm holding this for a few days because we just got to 72 on the RSI, which is the first time we hit it, which means we can have a few days of continuation if I am correct. And again, it's a small position, so my stop loss is at break even now because we got up significantly. So my stop loss is about $67 per share. If we hit that today, I'll get out of the position, but I'm, what I'm testing is to see if we have continuation for a few days to push up to 80 to 100 and go supernova. Because again, what happens is when you tend to get to an RSI on the daily chart of 70 or higher, for the first time, there's likely continuation for an explosive move. And we've seen that plenty of times on Tesla stock. So I'm seeing if we see that, that same push on DWOC now. That's it for positions. The rest are strangles that I'm selling. So the first one's on Roblox. It's the 70 put 120 call expiring February 4th. It was worth $2,700. It's now worth just under $2,000 left in premium. We see Roblox here sold off aggressively from highs from about 140 all the way down to about 80. And now we're trading about 90 pre-market. So I have one strangle where it's a 75 put and a 125 call. And this one we're looking at now is a 70 put and a 120 call expiring uh, February 4th, which is right where my mouse is right here. So basically I don't think that Roblox is gonna drop below 70 or by February 4th right here. And I don't think it's gonna go above 120 by February 4th right here. Reasoning being is because we have significant support here at 70, we have a lot of trading in the range from 70 to 85 so there's a lot of volume in here it's unlikely to really break that range and we've already sold off over 40 percent from highs so i think that the sell-off is overdone for growth stocks i think we can have a push up but i also see resistance at around 118 119 and uh, another resistance level at 105 so i don't see us really breaking 120 in the next couple weeks we could come up to 100 in the next couple of weeks, but I just it's it's a low probability that we do break that. Next one is a cover call position. It's the 1250 strike expiring January 21st, and I collected about $21 for this one. So $21 times eight was about 16,000 US that I collected, and it's currently worth five dollars. So from 16,000 to 4,600, most of the premium has been eaten up on this position. Basically it meant that a while back, I didn't think that Tesla would be above 1250 by January 21st. So far it's looking like it's not, it could have an explosive move and go above that. If it does, then I'm forced to sell 800 shares because there's eight contracts, which I have right here at 1250, which I am okay with because I think it'll be uh, temporary and we'll have a pullback below that if we do get there. Earnings is January 26th. And I think earnings will be the catalyst that pushes up to new all time highs possibly upwards towards 1300, but I don't see Tesla breaking all time highs before the earnings comes out. Next position is on Roblox, like we talked about before. This is my biggest position. It's 60 contracts, 75 strike put and 125 strike call. And we collected we collected about $12,000 on this one and it's currently uh, 8,600 left. It can expire on February 4th. We went over that position. Next one's on Lucid, 30 strike put, 60 strike call expiring January 28th. We collected about 6,000 on this one and there's currently 5,000 left in premium on this one. 
We'll pull it up on the chart. I set this position on two days ago when Lucid actually got to uh, $45 per share. And I used 30 as the floor price, 60 as the high price, because that's basically around all time highs. I don't think we're gonna get back to all time highs within the next two weeks. And I don't think we're gonna break $30 per share. Reason why I don't think we're gonna break 30 is because of all the EMAs we have to drop below. The 200 EMA is sitting at $30 right now. Highly unlikely we drop that low as we already had the nice sell off. We've recently had a solid push up. So I thought it was a good opportunity to choose a 60 strike because I think we're gonna have a great deal of resistance around the 50 to $55 level. And I just think that we could have a double top in the next two weeks. The RSI is climbing. So what, what would concern me is if we continue to see high volume and the RSI does break 70 on the daily chart, then I'd be concerned because we could have an explosive push up to all time highs for sure. But if we don't see the RSI get above 70 and we see the volume start to decline, then I'll be much more confident in us not breaking 60. Next position is on net. Set this position a while back, 50 contracts. We collected about $8,000, $9,000 in this one. And there is currently about 5,500 left in premium. 85 strike put, 160 strike call expiring February 4th. On net, here is the 160 strike call. Here is the 85 strike put. And this is exactly what we're seeing. We had an aggressive sell off from highs over 200 down to 100 for a 54% sell off. And because of that, I thought it was a good opportunity a week ago when we were trading around 130 to choose the 85 strike put. Because if you look back, there's lots of trading, lots of support here on 85. Highly unlikely for us to push down towards that. Definitely possible, but on the upside, I am bearish. I think there's a lot to break through to get back to up to the upside. So I chose the 160 strike because there is a lot of resistance at 140, and then there's a lot more resistance here at 160. No indications of us going bullish and breaking up higher, but there is possibility that we do trade even lower. I'm really relying on the support levels around 100 to hold for us not to break down below 85 in the next two, three weeks. New position I put on yesterday is a bull call on the SPY. It's a 475 strike call that I purchased and a 477 strike call that I sold. 30 contracts, and this basically means that I think by January 28th, because that's expiration, that the SPY will trade at 477 or higher. And because of that, uh, my max gain will be $3,000. So this cost me $3,000 and my gain will be $3,000 if SPY is trading at 477 or higher by January 28th. If it's trading below 475, by January 28th, then I lose all the $3,000. Taking a look at SPY here, it's trading at 472. I put this on yesterday when it was trading at 472 as well. And I think that there's, I'm just more bullish on the market in the next two weeks. I think we can push up towards that 477 level, um, pushing around all time highs. And if we don't, that's okay. It's a small position for me. It's, it's more of a test. I, I don't really take trades like this. So I'm really testing out to see how we how we hold. And I combined this with a strangle that I sold on SPY. So I sold a strangle at the same time as putting this position on, uh, selling the 448 strike put and the 492 strike call. And this basically means that I don't think that SPY will be above 492 in the next two weeks. And I don't think it's gonna be below 448 in the next two weeks. Because of that, I collected 3000 premium. So I used that 3000 premium I collected on that trade to buy the, the bull call spread. And if that one, and if SPY does end at 477 by January 28th, then we make an additional $3,000 on the trade. So basically, I was able to put on that bull call trade for free because I sold the strangle as long as SPY stays within that range the next two weeks. So that's an advanced strategy. Uh, you can use some buying power to sell a strangle and then use that credit to put on another trade um, within the same stock, just using a different strategy. So that's, what, that's exactly what I did here. Next trade here is on a firm. It's the 65 strike put and the 130 strike call, 30 contracts expiring February 4th. It was worth about $7,000. It's now worth about 6,000. So we have a couple weeks left till expiration. We put this trade on back here when a firm was trading in the 90s and it continued to sell off aggressively. Luckily we found some support and bouncing back up, getting and trading around the $80 level. So my strike is here at 65, expiring in a couple weeks, and that could be hit because it's still real no bullish sign of us getting back up. But um, what I am relying on is there's a lot of support trading from about 75 down to 62. So I like that range here. It's unlikely for us to really break 60 in the coming two weeks, but we could definitely trade around that $65 level. 
Again, no sign of us getting back up. And if we do get back up, there's resistance at $100. The next trade here is the January 2024 Tesla bull call, buying the 2000 strike call and selling the 2200 strike call. I went over this position before. It's actually massively in the green right now. Uh, when I bought this, it was uh, 56,000 it cost me. Now it's worth 60,000. It's fluctuating a lot on the screen here, but we're up a uh, good, good amount because I bought it when Tesla was trading about 1,050. January, 2024, if Tesla's trade at $2,200 per share or higher, then I reach the max gain, which is 420,000 US. So this cost me 56,000. My max gain is 420,000 US as long as Tesla is trading above 2,200 per share by January, 2024. And if it's trading at 2,000 a share or lower, then I lose all the 56,000. That's how the trade pans out because I personally believe that Tesla will trade at 2,200 or higher by January, 2024. Next trade here is on D-Dog. It's the 120 strike put and the 180 strike call. 30 contracts, it was worth 9,000, it's now worth 8,000, and it expires February 4th. Pulling up on the daily chart, this is where this is what we're working with. I see this resistance here at 180, so I love that strike there. There's currently no sign of us pushing back up. We are having some consolidation inside bars on the $140 level, so we could base here and then start to turn higher. Uh, but we had that strike there down at 120, and I feel good about that because there was a breakout from about 115 all the way up to 136. So I think, uh, you know, worst case, we drop down to that 115, test it and bounce back up. But I'm currently looking, uh, I'm currently liking the way this trade's set up because it's uh, right between both strikes. And I think we could trade around here uh, by expiration. Another trade on a firm, 60 put, 115 strike call, um, 30 contracts. Uh, la second last one is on Rivian. It's the 65 strike put and the 110 strike Call. So here it is on the screen, 65 strike put, 110 strike call. I really don't see us breaking that 100 level resistance. That's why we have the 110 strike and I don't see us breaking the 70 dollar level. We could trade down to 70 and bounce back up, but uh, the current valuation of Rivian is equal to Lucid. So there is room for us to go lower because I still think that Lucid should be worth more than Rivian. So we could see that in the coming weeks, Rivian trade a little bit lower, but not a ton more, and then Lucid trade a little higher, and that'll, in my opinion, be more of a fair valuation for both. Oatly broke 780, so we took the loss there. It got filled at 778. It was about a $650 loss on that trade with small size. No problem there. Didn't work out the way we thought it would. Close the position. Spy strangle, we talked about this before. Four, we talked about this before. It's January 31st expiration. We collected about $3,000 for this trade, and 448 strike put, 492 strike call. And this is it right here on the daily chart. We talked about it before. There's lots of support on the downside. Uh, there's this uptrend going all the way back. So it's unlikely for us to really break down below 450 in the coming two weeks. Um, more likely to retest highs in the coming two weeks, in my opinion. We have a total of about $55,000 left in premium that is set to expire in the coming two to three weeks. So as long as the stocks stay between the ranges that we just spoke about, then I will collect all 55,000 US in premium over the next two to three weeks, and then I can put on more trades. I still have about 2 million in buying power as a cushion. If there's a steep sell-off in something and the VIX spikes, then I can put on new trades. But for now, I'm just sitting on my, my, for now, I'm just sitting on my hands because the VIX is low. It's not very high whatsoever. So when the VIX is low, it means volatility is low, which means there's not a lot of premium uh, to be had in stocks. So we're just gonna, let the trades ride out for now. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Subscribe for more videos just like this. I wanna help you achieve financial freedom in the stock market. So if you're looking to do that, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can stay updated and I'll see you in the next video.